Are there going to be sanctions for China? Uber hires hackers not for what you think. HTTPS blocks Russian Wikipedia ban. And LTE is going to hit 5 gigahertz because, you know, Verizon says it's open. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Happy Monday, people. I'm Patrick Norton, and this is ThreatWire for August 15th, 2015, your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. And a big thanks to everybody contributing to the show on patreon.com slash threatwire. U.S. developing sanctions against China over cyber thefts is not the kind of title that usually sets us on fire here, but the Washington Post says, quote, the Obama administration is developing a package of unprecedented economic sanctions against Chinese companies and individuals who have benefited from their government's cyber theft of valuable U.S. trade secrets. That's a heavy statement, especially given the financial state of China. And this would be the first use of Obama's executive order, the one called blocking the property of certain persons engaging in significant malicious cyber-enabled activity. Catchy, isn't it? That's the, uh, we're going to punish nations and people who harm national security or economic health. Uh, the harms prescribed in, the, in, in that executive order, harming or otherwise significantly compromising provision of services in a critical infrastructure sector, i.e. don't mess with the infrastructure, causing a significant disruption to the availability of computer or network of computers, i.e. don't screw with our networks, or three, here's the big one, causing a significant misappropriation of funds or economic resources, trade secrets, personal identifiers, or financial information for commercial or competitive advantage or private financial gain. Now, given that the FBI claims, the Washington Post reports on this, China alone accounted for most of the 53% jump in economic espionage in the last year or so, well, you can connect the dots even without the OPM break-ins. Now, whether the White House will use the sanctions at all, uh, much less right before China's president Xi Jinping of China hits Washington next month, uh, it's going to be interesting, people. It's going to be very, very interesting. Speaking of private financial gain, remember that business email scam that took Ubiquity Networks for over $40 million? Uh, targeting phishing or hacking into the email of executives that control wire transfers between companies? Well, Krebs on Security reports that the FBI says thieves stole nearly $750 million in such scams from more than 7,000 victim companies in the U.S. alone between October 2013 and August 2015. Uh, overall, the larger picture, victims come from 50 states, 79 countries, and the total internationally is over $1.2 billion. Big shock, Krebs quotes the FBI, quote, fraudulent transfers have been reported going to 72 countries. However, the majority of the transfers are going to Asian banks located within China and Hong Kong. And the scam is picking up speed as in a 270% rise. With all due respect to the president's potential sanctions, get yourself some 2FA, some two-factor authentication in your purchasing system that backs up email requests for wire transfers. Use a better system and protect yourself, people. In cheerful news for folks that hate oppressive government censorship, the EFF says a Russian order to block Wikipedia was foiled by Wikipedia's use of HTTPS, i.e. an encrypted connection from the user's browser to the servers at Wikipedia. Uh, what happened? Well, Russia wanted to block an article on Charles Hashish that offended. The government was, quote, says the EFF, left with only the option of ordering the entire site blocked or leaving the offending page accessible, which they did block all of Wikipedia, which apparently pissed off Vladimir Putin when he went to check his Wikipedia entry because, well, you know, because. After just a few hours of blocks, Russia reverted its policy, claiming that the material, says the EFF, had been taken down. It hadn't, according to Wikipedia editors, says the EFF, though the title and URL of the page had been changed. So, the EFF claims HTTPS by preventing granular blocking, i.e. we're going to block this article from all of Russia, has not only saved Wikipedia, but they also said it, it prevented GitHub from being blocked in China, Google services in Iran, and more, and that more news services especially should follow the Washington Post example and get their sites on HTTPS to make it more difficult to block information. Meanwhile, censorship still sucks and governments can be really scary. Another light news, remember earlier when I mentioned that Uber had hired hackers? They're not to go after Lyft. Remember the Jeep Cherokee hack? Wall Street Journal says Uber just hired Charlie Miller and Chris Valachek to work on security at Uber's Advanced Technology Center in Pittsburgh, basically to keep Uber's new self-driving cars secure. Well, not that they're here yet, but when they come out in the future, 
because self-driving cars, who wouldn't want to attack those? If your iPhone is jailbroken, ThreatPost says watch out for Key Raider, which, quote, has the ability to steal certificates, private keys, and Apple account information. It's in the wild. Somebody found a couple hundred thousand accounts worth of information on a server. And finally, from the dang it, just as 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi started to get useful, Verizon and T-Mobile want to use the open 5 gigahertz bandwidth for LTE phone service. I am grossly oversimplifying. Go read the article on Ars Technica. There's a link in the show notes. If you're curious about whether or not uh, open bandwidth can be used by carriers to supplement their wireless bandwidth, which I guess they think it should be and everybody else on the planet is like, no Verizon, stop, stop right now. You want to see your pet right up here? It doesn't have to be furry or adorable. You just need to support ThreatWire on patreon.com slash ThreatWire. Hey, if we hit our goals, we can do the show three days a week with no ads. Seriously, if you find value from this and can spare a few cents an episode, please head over to patreon.com slash ThreatWire. And you can find all our episodes, links to our social networks, and other ways to contribute over at ThreatWire.net. With that, I'm Patrick Norton, and I'll see you on the internet. Thank <laughs> you.